communicate clearly. This is hands down, bar none, the most important thing you can possibly do. Clear communication is the cause of all of your successful eight hour work days. If you worked the weekends and you worked overtime, it was because somebody did not communicate clearly about what they wanted or what they were going to do or how they were going to get it done and there was a misunderstanding and that causes planning to go bad and that is why you are working at three o'clock in the morning. Guaranteed. So the secret to clear communication is that you're gonna need a team. I couldn't do any of those shots in that movie by myself. I needed about three or 400 of the most passionate people who by the end of the project would actually also have talent to get all that kind of stuff done. It's just impossible to do any of that stuff by yourself. I couldn't do it if I wanted to. So you really have to get good at working with a team. I cannot stress enough how important it is. There is no one person show, there's no one band, everything is an ensemble and you have got to work together and clear communication is the only way you're gonna effectively do that in the most efficient way possible. So everybody gets what they need out of it, nobody steps on anyone's toes. When someone is talking to you, don't just hear them, you have gotta listen to what they're saying and try to understand it from their perspective. Always remember that somebody telling you to do something is telling you to do it from their perspective, not from yours. So the thing that I've always found is that if I'm talking to, and you guys all get a pass because you don't, you're, not, you're not on duty today. <laughs> But if I'm talking to a room full of people and saying, okay, here's what Marty wants to see in this shot, and here's what you know, Thelma needs for the edit, and here's what you know, this filmmaker or that filmmaker expect from the work that we're gonna do, uh, people who don't write things down will fuck that shot up. People who write shit down We'll nail it the next time, and the movie will be great because of it, because we'll be able to do better work on more shots, and everybody will have a good time. It is so disheartening to see that you like talk to an audience full of people who are working on the shot, but don't take any notes about what's being said, and they expect somebody else to write the notes for them and send them along, but the other people who are gonna write the notes for them are not, they're like production people, they're not artists. Like, you're an artist. Write down what you understood, and then read it back. But here's the tricky part. Don't transcribe exactly what was said, because now you're not paying attention, now you're just a courtroom stenographer. You're just writing down what people said. And if I ask you, like, well, what did I just say? You can repeat it back to me. But if I say, what did I mean? You'll be like, I don't know. I have to think about it now because I was too busy writing down what you said. Spend time understanding what people are saying. And the note that you take is a very brief summary of what it meant or what you need to do about it. I cannot stress enough how important this will be for your life. It will change everything because you don't appreciate it, but like I do it, I write notes obsessively and I never even look at them again later. The mere act of having summarized the thought and written it down on a piece of paper means I can now throw it away because I have understood it. And it's super awesome. I cannot stress enough how important that would be. I would make a suggestion, although I am violating it right now very clearly, that unless you're an actor, you should stay out of the spotlight. Being in the spotlight makes you a profile target. Right? So you better be really amazing if you're gonna be showy or, and if you're gonna be flashy. Let your work speak for yourself. Don't talk too much, too loudly or too boldly. Just do great work and you will, you will get to the top. And the best part about not making a big scene out of being awesome is that you get all these extra bonus points because people underestimate you. They don't assume that you'll be capable of doing something that you're totally capable of doing because you didn't make a whole big scene out of it. And that's gonna buy you a little bit of surprise factor where people will be happy and they're surprised by the quality of the work that you've done and, and that feeling that you create in the audience or your clients or your parents or whoever it is that you're trying to impress with a particular thing is something that you can't quite put your finger on. Like, I'm not gonna give you tips on how to blur the edges of a comp so that it looks like the most totally real because that's what class is for. What I'm telling you is, is that the value of what you're doing is about contrast. And if people expect that you're going to produce nothing or produce low quality results when you produce anything of high quality, it's that difference 
that has the impact. If they expect that you're the best in the world and then you produce the best in the world, well then they go, well of course, I expected nothing less and I was certainly paying for it. So take advantage of that contrast. Lower people's expectations and then over deliver and people will always be pleasantly surprised and happy when they work with you. If you're on a movie set, it is a classic amateur move to like be cool on the movie set and you get your coffee and you get your walkie talkie and you're hanging out and you're shooting the shit and you're talking about that last job that you worked on and how crazy the hours were and all that kind of stuff. On a movie set, people who have spent a lot of time on movie sets filter those people out right away because they know that they're amateurs. Amateurs like make it like being on a movie set is like a thing that they get because they're so good. But meanwhile, the professionals are totally working, focused on what the director wants, focused on doing a great movie, because there's no Oscar for best set attitude. There's no Oscar for, I was most appreciated on the movie set. Nobody gives a shit about the process of making the movie at all. All that matters is what goes into the movie theater, and the whole time that you were goofing off, drinking a coffee, being loud, or distracting anybody else from working, that came off the screen. So we always talk about, in the movie business, you talk about things being on the screen or off the screen. Did you put that money on the screen or did it fall off the screen? Like, did you waste it on a dumb idea that didn't actually materialize or is it in the movie? Can I point to it and say, that was worth it? And you always want to be a person that they point to and say, that person was worth it. I can't make the next movie unless that person is involved. And it happens all the time because you get, you get filmmakers who are like, well, I'd love to make this movie, but I can't make a movie without these people and this person and that person. And when you're part of that crew and they'll hold the production of a movie pending your availability, it's not because you were the most liked person on set. It was because you were the person who never stopped working to make the movie better. So pay attention to everything that's happening around you. Always be ready to assist. Watch other people doing their jobs and learn from everything that they're doing. And if you're, if you're all about the business, you're in, you're in good shape and no one's going to criticize you because they see that your passion is towards the same thing that they have. You might make some enemies sometimes, but at the end of the day, the point is to make a great product and make a great experience. And as long as people believe that that's what you're trying to do, you'll never get fired, you'll never get kicked off the set, and you'll always get called back. So, And then another note, if the call time says 6 a.m., be there at 5.45 at least. If you're 15 minutes early, you're on time. And if you're on time, you're late. And that's just how it is on a movie set. People will show up late, and everybody hates those people. For sure. So, <clears throat> like I said, always putting the project above yourself uh, will essentially make you invincible. I have gotten into, and I usually don't get involved in politics, even though I went to school for it, but if the director knows that your heart and soul is to put the movie above yourself and that you are only working for the grid of the project and that you are trusting in the director's vision or the cinematographer's vision. And by the way, it's not always the director. It's not always the cinematographer. Somebody on that damn movie is responsible for making that movie great. And sometimes it's despite the director's best efforts. But once you figure out who that person is that believes in the movie more than anybody else, follow their lead and go 110% and make all of their dreams possible because then when you get into trouble and somebody tries to fire you, the director or the producer or the cinematographer will say, no, you're fired and you don't have to worry about it because they know that, hey, that kid comes in early and leaves late and does everything that can possibly be done to make this movie better. They're doing things that aren't even their job and I'm not getting that kind of dedication out of anybody else on this set, so you're not fucking with that kid. Uh, you're not messing with that kid. There's, like a, <clears throat> there's actually a movie called The Kid Stays in the Picture, which is kind of similar about, that, about a movie producer who does that. So that's the kind of attitude that you want to have. Um, there's you know, no I in team, but uh, you should be prepared to be the only person left. It's happened a lot where if you have that kind of focus and that kind of dedication, and it's not easy and it's not you know, natural, you just have to mentally in your head say, I will do this, and that's that. And you can be the first person in and the last person out 
whether it's 16 hours a day or 58 hours in a row. I have shot on movie sets for 58 hours in a row going. It doesn't happen very often because it's really expensive for all the union people, but generally speaking, like that kind of dedication, you choose to do it, you don't have to do it. It's no one's forcing anybody to do crazy stuff like that. But it pays off, and for me it paid off. That kind of dedication worked out perfectly, and I strongly advise it as the fastest way to accelerate your career, learn, and push your envelope of comfort. Um, this is a picture of a puppy, because <laughs> I had too many words in a row, and if you don't have a picture, people start to just tone out, and so this is a puppy. It kind of looks like Snoopy. His name is Merlin. Next slide. 